Hello everyone, my name is Jake Leeper, I'm the game director for Europa Universalis 4, and I present to you the Cradle of Civilization, our latest expansion focusing on warfare and the Islamic world. From the moment you launch our game, you will find that the Middle East has been revitalized. From the estuaries of the Nile and the coastline of Anatolia to the mountains of Afghanistan, new provinces and nations populate the heart of Islam. Many flavorful mechanics have been added for the nations there, and additionally warfare has been spiced up for the whole world. Looking to our Muslim nations, the Cradle of Civilization revamps their religion with seven schools of Islam. Each Muslim nation follows one of these schools and gains a bonus from it, and should they foster good relations with another school, they will be able to invite scholars from them and gain their bonus additionally. These good relations can cause a more global effect, where two schools can build up a mutual trust and respect each other, making diplomacy easier. Conversely, should a nation belonging to a school prove to be a warmongering country, then this can damage relations between schools. Various governments in the Islamic world have gained their own unique interactions. The sheep Turkoman of eastern Anatolia must now balance the tribal allegiance if they want to access the strong bonuses that will allow them to sustain the conquests that history has in store for them. Through successful battles and humiliations of their rivals, the tribesmen can be kept on their side, but this fickle support can be lost through disastrous war and failures in battle. Mamluks too have seen changes, where upon the passing of their own ruler, a new sultan must be selected, either from their own cultured lands, or a Caucasian slave from abroad. Foreign slaves are seen as more legitimate rulers, however the sultan can call upon support from his own cultured lands, so a fine line must be drawn between stability of the realm and exploiting their people. Looking to the Ottomans, they now have access to an elite unit, the Janissaries. These can be recruited in heathen lands and, whilst they cost more to reinforce, are far better on the battlefield. They are also able to assign pashas to states, driving down the maintenance costs and the unrest in the area in exchange for higher costs of building and recruiting. These features, which are unique to the government typically reserved for the Ottomans, are now up for grabs to any Muslim nation who can bring down the Ottomans and form Rum, gaining the government system for themselves. Trade policies have been added to the game, where merchants inside trade nodes can set their own policy for that node. They can do this to improve their trade power, improve espionage, and also improve relations with nations there. Unique to Islamic nations, however, is the ability to propagate their trade through these policies. In any trade company node, they will be able to set up a center of religion, where it will spread to other provinces within that node. Moving to wartime features available to countries across the world, there have been major changes. All nations will have an army professionalism value. By focusing on their professionalism and not relying on foreign mercenaries, a nation will be able to field a far stronger standing army and unlock new abilities at gated levels. Any army with a general in command can choose to drill, and these drilled units will perform far better in combat, although their army drill will wear down over time and as fresh reinforcements come in. We have also added the ability to conform to template, allowing you to change the composition of your army at the click of a button. Cradle of Civilization has many other features, including the ability to exploit your development. By permanently reducing the economic output of a province, you can fulfill a short-term need of cash, sailors, or manpower. One such use for this money is the ability to promote your advisors. For a few years' salary, an advisor can be promoted above the existing limit of level 3 all the way up to 5. These features are all part of the Cradle of Civilization, which will be released alongside the free 1.23 Persia update. This Persia update, which comes with the usual myriad of fixes, improvement and polish, also includes vast map changes in the Middle East and the introduction of five new trade goods. Glass, gems, livestock, paper and incense have all been added to enrich the world's trading experience. There are also free changes in the courtroom where your ruler, heir, concert, and advisors have their own religion and culture, which plays into many events. Alongside these are tons of new ideas, two new buildings, and 20 new achievements to get. Do you have what it takes to get around the world in 80 years, or reforge the Ayyubid Empire? With vast changes to the Near East, new warfare mechanics, and a vast array of new playstyles, there has never been a better time to rock the cradle of civilization.